What is up, everybody? It's Dogs HQ here with you, Jake Rowe, Jeremy Johnson, and uh, it's hump day. It's also flip day. Uh, you know, it's Wednesday, and Georgia has picked up a flip. And for Georgia fans, it doesn't taste any better than when they get a chance to flip somebody from Florida. And Georgia's done that. They have flipped four-star defensive lineman, Dublin High School, Nasir Johnson uh, from Florida. He's been committed to Florida since June. Got Jeremy on here to talk about it. Jeremy, you've seen this cat in person. Give us some insight into what Georgia is getting here with this six foot four, 300 pound defensive tackle who's ranked number 171 overall in the country um, in the on three industry ranking. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him uh, in person in a game against DeMello Jones, who was a Georgia commit. He's He jumps off the screen at you um, just with his sheer size. I mean, we list him at 6'4", 300 pounds. I I can assure you he's probably a little bigger than that, honestly. And he's, so, he's really athletic. Um, this is a guy that was, when I walked up to the game, was like out there catching passes with the receivers and tight ends and playing catch with the quarterback. So he's very athletic, very explosive, um, big-time athlete. He even alluded to it himself. He kind of said he was the ATH of the defensive line. So he's a confident guy as well. Um, Definitely think he's a guy that could play multiple roles on any defensive line just with his athleticism and size. You can see it right there on film, too, the way he just kind of stands out from a size standpoint. Um, I Listen, I know not everybody is uh, our recruitniks like we are, and they look at it. But, I mean, you can see it, man. He's a high-hipped kid, a lot of length, yeah. um, really athletic. And from what I understand, Jeremy, is having a really, really fantastic senior season. Yeah, I mean he that game we that I was at he I mean he he dominated both sides of the football in that game and he was a big part in why they were able to beat Swainsboro that night. I mean he he can he can rush the passer. He plays off in one of the offensive line positions on and um on their offensive line. So you know and they run behind him a lot. I mean he's not just a guy that they plug in on the offensive line and just say okay well you're the big guy so we're just gonna have you out here but. I mean, he actually makes an impact as an offensive lineman. So, you know, I think he's had a breakout season. I mean, he's been good over the last couple of years, but, you know, he's been dominant this year. I mean, like you said, like, like you said, we can see on tape here, he's he can rush the passer. I mean, a lot of times you see big guys like this, they kind of become those one gap, plug yeah. a hole, and they kind of they kind of lumber away. This guy will chase down screens. He will – get in the quarterback's face and at least attempt to turn and run and go get the guy. He's not a hit and relaxed guy at, at the high school level. So that bowls well for a guy to be, you know, a potential role player and rotational guy at Georgia at some point. And, uh, you know, talking about where he fits at Georgia, I'll go ahead and say this. I mean, if I've heard it once out of a Georgia defensive lineman, I've heard it a thousand times. Trey Scott teaches those guys to kind of play all – three positions up front yeah. and you watch this kid and you see something that Trey Scott's probably going to really love about him. He's lined up, he's lined up as a five technique outside shoulder of the tackle. You've seen him as a three technique. You kind of see him get in the middle of it. He's got the size to get in the middle of it for all uh, for Georgia. You know, one of the things that, you know, right there, you know, you got him at right guard. Um, you know, we're sitting there watching him play right guard, watching him pull out, kick out a guy, mm -hmm. picks up two blocks. Um, he, he's a, he's a very versatile player. He plays, at a small-ish school and comparatively in the state of Georgia. I mean, Dublin's not a um, not one of the larger schools. And, you know, he, uh, what, what what classification is that, Jeremy? Is it three or is it four? That's 1A, 1A. Oh, that's 1A? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. I thought they were a little bigger than that. But, yeah, I mean, Dublin always put out good players. I mean, you know, you look back, Demarius Thomas played at Georgia Tech. Um, you know, plays both sides of the ball, which is something you definitely want to see. Um, but but the one thing that kind of stands out for me in this Georgia in this class is, you know, Georgia came into this class with multiple needs, you know, on the mm -hmm. defensive line. They they wanted to add guys at basically every position that they've got up there. Nose tackle, um, they've got Namdi Aboko there after Michael Burrow. Um, you know, the, the defensive tackle position, that three technique, that Jalen Carter spot basically. Um, Devontae Wyatt also played it. You know, Georgia's gotten Jordan Thomas. And now I think Nasir Johnson kind of fits in that role as well. And you look at defensive end, Justin Green, Joseph Jonah, Ajanye, they've checked off some boxes at that and, and the versatility there. What um in terms of, of him developmentally, um, do you see any concerns there? Do you see where do you think he fits at Georgia? 
I personally think you alluded to it. I mean, he played he could play all three of those interior positions. I think, I mean, and his body type is one that you could do multiple things with it. I think he could lean out and be a perfect five technique, and he could be a free technique that you know pursues and gets in there or pass down situations. Or he can add a few pounds and be a guy that can be an anchor and be a guy that can play in the nose, play that zero spot a lot like. You know, my comparison for him is Nasir Stackhouse a little bit. Just, I mean, Nasir's about 15 pounds heavier, but he's also five years older. But, you know, I, I kind of see him in that kind of light, you know, just being able to move up and down the defensive line and, you know, not necessarily having to lock in. I mean, obviously you got some guys, like you said, Nasir. Um, I mean, not Nasir, but uh, John, Joseph Ajani, Ajani, Joseph Jonah Ajanye that, you know, can do some of these things as well, as, as well as Jordan Thomas. So that trio can – they can they're almost interchangeable just with, because they're so athletic and and they're so big and, and Justin Justin Green can also kind of do some of those things. So I think he's a guy that allows him some flexibility. Um, my concerns would be, you know, obviously the level of competition. You know, when you see a guy playing in one A, obviously that's the first thing you kind of like. Oh, can he make the transition? But also the positive in that is that he's been dominant. It's not like. It's yeah. been a question of who the guy is. He's been a dominant football player at this level. So that, that obviously kind of, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, that, that kind of eases me there. And I do think he plays a little high sometimes. He has a yeah. tendency to kind of open up and show his chest a little bit. Um, just because he's so much bigger and stronger than everyone else. So I think that will be something he will have to clean up to play at Georgia. Well, I think Georgia probably be able to rely on uh, you know, Micah Morris or Dylan Fairchild to kind of teach him some stuff as far as playing too high, he'd catch one up under the chin, maybe first couple practices, he'll he'll figure out he's got to play a little lower. Those are all things freshmen have to learn. Um, you yeah. can't really talk about this one without bringing up the fact that um, – listen, we're not trying to – we're not trying to bask in anybody's pain here, um, but it is Florida. And uh, Florida's class is really taking a hit. It seems like just yesterday they were kind of – you know, fist pumping and, and finger pointing at, at getting LJ McCray from Georgia. And uh, here they are. They've had uh, DeMonta Waller um, flip to Auburn. Um, they lost a cornerback to Texas. And now one of their best D linemen, D uh, you know, here in uh, Nazir Johnson flipping to Georgia. What do you think this? Uh, I mean, you got to you got to think that, that Georgia's kind of got a little bit of a smile on its face for stealing one from Florida here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, there's the rivalry, but two. You know, anytime you take a player like this away from a program that you're going to see, you're going to see this program multiple times over the next couple of years. I mean, that that that's a it's almost like a double commitment because you yeah you're addition by subtraction because now they don't have him. So you know, I, it's Florida's class is, has taken it's, you know it looks like it's starting. You know, to see this is a big flip for them. So um, obviously, it, it definitely hurts. It definitely helps Georgia, um, but. You know, looking at their class now, it's not as as potent as it was on the defensive line, and that's kind of where that that whole rebuild process and that whole keeping up with Georgia has to begin for them because of Georgia's ability to run the football and throw the football now. So, yeah, it's definitely a big big loss for them for Florida in, in that term. Now we're looking at this D line class. There's five commitments in it. We kind of laid it out. You got a, a true nose tackle, two more interior guys, and and Johnson and Thomas now. And then you've got, um, you know, the two defensive end types. So Joseph Jonah Johnye, I think, could probably slide inside at some point as well. Justin Green. Georgia's still not done, man. Um, they're still not done. I mean, we could see them add, what would you think, maybe even as much as two more guys to this yeah. to this defensive line class? Yeah. I mean, we're we talking maybe two more guys, maybe even a third, you know, just – I mean, they're not done. And they, this is clearly a, a an area of – a point of emphasis for them and i and you you look at georgia's team over the last five years and you get why i mean you rotated Jalen like Jalen carter didn't start for two years of his career at georgia before becoming the monster he was you know as a junior and being a top 10 draft pick so that's kind of what they want to get back to and i think you know this is only the beginning of it i mean they're going to add a lot of bodies this year but then you look at the 2025 class and who they're recruiting there i mean you got justice terry committed already you got you know, they're after Elijah Griffin. Those are two elite players at the yeah. defensive line position. You couple these two, those two classes together, should they get those guys? I mean, now you're looking at, hey, Georgia's defensive line is now eight, nine deep again. So I definitely think it's going to be, 
you know, a big, a big point of emphasis for the rest of this class. And I think, you know, guys like Jaden Hamilton, who was in, on OV, um, uh, Nasir, um, uh, Makai Burrow, uh, three star out of, out of, out of Creekside. I'm blanking on the other young man's name. Brian right Taylor. Ryan Taylor, Brian Taylor, the defensive lineman, you know, from Blaine College. He, yeah, another, another, yeah, another target. junior college guy. He's, a, he's, I think he might would, they've got him listed like 270. So he might actually be a kind of more like a five tech guy. A five um, tech. Yeah. yeah. You got those three, you know, uh, I, I, I mean, Hamlin's a guy we're not real sure about um, at this point. You know, obviously he was on an official visit. Not, not sure where George is in terms of, of making a big play for him. I know they'd like to add Burrow. I know they'd like to add Taylor. So they add those two, and I still, Jeremy, expect them to hit the transfer portal for a couple of guys that are experienced. Um, you know, and, and it makes sense, right? I mean, you, if you were there for senior day um, on Saturday, uh, Tramiel Walthour, um, Warren Brinson, Zion Logue. Zion Logue, you know, on the video that Georgia put out today is basically saying my last year, my last time, you know. So, yeah. um, you know, Nasir Stackhouse, you know, all of those guys, they're kind of expecting some losses on the defensive line. Um, they had some losses – late in this in the transfer portal cycle last year with um mm -hmm. with the, the kid from louisiana i'm drawing a blank on his name backing out Sean, uh, you Sean know, washington yeah deshaun washington kind of jumping out before spring practice uh bear alexander jumping out there at the end of spring practice right on, on g day um you know mm -hmm. so georgia's lost some bodies they're, they're they're definitely filling that need and and i think you've got to like the fact that you've got a combination of some sort of of uh of multiple high school guys and a juco guy and then they're also going to hit the portal too yeah and i don't I mean and also you you look at this too it's like you know some of these guys are gonna have to play right away but then also you don't want five freshmen having to play either right I mean, and then you even look down the road a little bit like next year michael williams will be a draft eligible eligible junior after next year so you even have to start looking at replacing him potentially at some point so yeah, Ty I mean, Ingram Dawkins as well. You know, I mean, like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, T, uh, yeah, TID definitely is a guy that you know, especially next year, he'll have an opportunity to go be one of those guys that gets drafted high as well. So, I mean, it's definitely going to be a we're going to see the roster flip along this defensive line, and it's going to happen really quickly because they're going to have to be really aggressive. And that's this, this is a prime example of that happening. And listen, we talked about Georgia adding guys via the portal. Unexpected things happen to take away in the portal too, and uh, you know those are all things that we we definitely have to keep an eye on in terms of Georgia managing this roster. But it's it's pretty clear that Kirby and Trey Scott wanted uh, numbers, they wanted quality, they wanted quantity. They've got a lot of it. Um, Nasir Johnson becomes the fourth four star prospect along Georgia's defensive line in this class, joining Jordan Thomas, Justin Green, and Joseph Jonah Janye. And uh, the Bulldogs are not done. We're going to have it covered for you over at Dogs HQ. Uh, listen, YouTube channel here, like and subscribe. We love you. We want you here. Come check us out. And then a special, big game special over at Dogs HQ, Georgia Place, Tennessee this week. Um, get 50% off a year-long membership over at Dogs HQ. That's basically getting six months for free. Or um, try us out for one month for $1. We've got you covered, and uh, we had you covered on this one beforehand, just so you know you would have known this was coming uh, uh, in advance uh, if you were with us over at Dolls HQ. So come see us, and uh, y'all take care.